Welcome to the many interpretations of Anurognathus and a couple of other Anurognathids. Anurognathus was a small pterosaur that lived in the late Jurassic of what is now Germany, and they are also one of my favorite pterosaurs, despite the fact that there's not a lot of them. Like, seriously, there's next to none. Very, very few. Basically zero but that's completely fine you know we're gonna take a look at practically any creature that i possibly can because there's a lot of creatures that deserve that sort of recognition uh so yeah let's without further ado let's get right into it our first appearance of a neurognathus was in walking with dinosaurs the original we get these little gremlin looking things kind of flying around landing on sauropods and eating the insects off of them um it is true that a neurognathus was likely an insectivore it has a lot of this, a lot of the same characteristics that you'll see on bats like kind of like a reduced snap out these small teeth that are perfect for grabbing insects and the sort of wing structure that can help them maneuver and you know capture the sort of things it also seems to have the proper attachment points for whiskers that can like kind of feel when insects are close so yeah it seems likely that anurognathus and its relatives were insect eaters these fellas though are quite a bit shrink wrapped you can really see the shape of their skull right here um, they lack the sort of eyes that you would expect for an anurognathus. They also do lack the sort of, uh, you know, pycnofibers, aka feathers, that you would expect for an animal like this. It also does seem like their skull might be a little bit too thin at the snout, uh, instead of being a little bit more broad and kind of frog-shaped. They are also portrayed in the incorrect spot, at least for a neurognathus itself. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, a neurognathus did live in Germany during the late Jurassic and not in North America, where this episode takes place. However, there was likely another a neurognathid that lived in that area known as Mesodactylus. So they caught a lucky break with that one. You know, that you just have to look at this one as Mesodactylus instead of uh, a Neurognathus, even though its skeletal structure doesn't really match up to, to that either. It's still a little shrink-wrapped little little thing, you know, is it's something. It's certainly something. Um, and, you know, them, like, kind of landing on sauropods, spending their time living on there, I don't know if there's really any basis for that. They likely just spent their time flying around trying to catch insects, though it is probably possible that they would hang around some larger animals because a larger, larger animals typically do invite a lot of insects, so that'd be, like, a prime spot for them to go hunting for uh, you know, for, for things like that. After that, there is primeval, and a lot of the same things that I said about walking with dinosaurs applies to this as well. The shape of the skull, the teeth are also a little bit too wide, uh, and overall, it seems like a creature that was made to look a little bit more terrifying rather than, you know, being a little bit more accurate. I did I did a little bit of reading, and there's some talks that this might be like something that evolved from a neurognathus rather than being a, a neurognathus itself. You know, something that's made to look a little bit more terrifying for the show. It does lack the pycnofibers that I was talking about. Its snout does seem to be a little bit too long and a little bit too thin as well. It does seem like it is a relatively small pterosaur, though. So there is that. That is... As close as we're gonna get, I suppose. I like the colors of it, though. I, I think the colors are quite cool, especially when I'm looking at some of these, uh, like, little breakups of the model. That face, that looks pretty cool. It's interesting how the snout kind of curved downwards a little bit, but, yeah, you know, it's it's pretty cool. But it does very much look like the walking with dinosaurs and Neurognathus in, the, in all of its shrink-wrapped glory with a very long neck and just, ugh, I don't know, man. I don't know. Anyway, let's go ahead and move on to the video games where there are few, uh, and they're all in the Jurassic franchise. So first, we have Jurassic Park 3 Park Builder, which, yeah, same thing we've been seeing. That is certainly one of the most designs to ever exist. One of the most designs to ever exist. It is certainly a design that exists. That is, yeah... <laughs> It's, you can see a common theme. A lot of the, a lot of these guys that were created at the same point in time have a very uh, similar reconstruction, and that might have been the uh, the consensus for the time for a little pterosaur like this, especially before uh, picno fibers. You know, these earlier feathers were. Uh, a lot more widely discovered in pterosaurs. I like how it's kind of hanging upside down, though. It, it kind of makes it seem like a bat, which, of course, bat comparisons for a neurognathus are kind of, you know, there's a, there's some justification behind it. Because, again, they are insectivorous flying reptiles. They're not dinosaurs. I don't know if I ever mentioned that, but they, they are pterosaurs. Pterosaurs are not dinosaurs. Uh, but they are insectivores, and they have sort of like the same type of face. You know, it's very interesting little creatures that I just love with my heart. But we don't get into like really good designs until we finally, finally reach Jurassic World Alive. And they give us a great design, not just a good design, but a great design. 
Look at the way that the eyes look. Look at the shape of the head. Look how much fluff it has and how thick that neck is because it's not shrink wrapped. This is a great design. This is a like a really good, accurate depiction of a Neurognathus. And in this art right here, you'll even see it eating little bugs. Perfect. It's a good depiction. We got a good depiction of a Neurognathus, and now I can go to sleep happy at night. Um, the same thing also applies to Jurassic World, the game, where it appears that the same uh, basic model has also been used for that. But yeah, this is what I'm talking about. You know, these small uh, pycnal fibers, aka feathers that are present, these very tiny teeth that are perfect for grabbing onto insects, these relatively these relatively pronounced eyes, and the colors also look great on these. I really like the red coloration, and you know, the, the, the coverage of it looks looks fantastic as well. And now we have Jurassic World Evolution 2 with j Opterus. I freaking love these little guys. And this is probably my favorite one on the uh, on on this list. So of course, Jehalopterus is a little Aneurognathid. It's in the same family as Aneurognathus. And honestly, this is probably, <laughs> this is among one of the most accurate on the list, of course, right up there with Jurassic World Live and Jurassic World The Game. Um, it's got the proper head shape. The You'll notice that it has those little tiny, very small needle teeth. The shape of the wings even look pretty good. Uh, its whole body looks great. It's got a little added tail thing right here, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, and one of my little fav like my favorite little details, which is, you know, purely speculative, purely something that they just did just to, you know, to you know, make the design interesting, are these little tufts of feathers that are kind of like poking up like a barn owl. I love that. I love that because it kind of makes it look like a bat, of course, and the Neurognathids are very bat-like in nature, in their whole skeletal anatomy. I love these guys so much. Look at that little guy. Look at that little sucker. <laughs> look at them fly around. And the fact that they introduced a whole new feeder just for these guys is amazing to me. Um, let's see if we can get some different colors uh, of these guys. Yeah, let's put put down a Alamosaurus. That'll that'll do the trick. Oh, yeah, this one's darker. There's some cool patterns. Yeah, they do have some cool patterns as well. Um, yeah, th but these are easily like among my favorite pterosaurs in the game. This and Thanatus Draken, I just I love the way that they look, and uh, you know especially with the little fluff on it. The hands even look pretty decent. It's a great design. It's a great model. Easily one of my favorites in the game. They're so small, the way that they fly around. It's it's awesome. I hope that they make it to Jurassic World Evolution 3. I really do. If, if they don't, I'll be very sad. Um, but they look great. They look great. Awesome job, Frontier. Okay, and then before we finish the video, there's a potential spoiler for Jurassic World Rebirth. So go ahead and click away if you want to avoid that. Is everybody gone? Good. Uh, there is a possibility that a Neurognathus will appear in Rebirth. Uh, it's apparently been confirmed. I'm not too sure because I'm not digging for those sort of things. I've just heard from other people in my comments section and things like that. Apparently, it's going to be like a little green Aneurognathus that's decently accurate. Take that for a grain of salt, but apparently it will have an appearance in the movie. But that's it. There's not a lot of depictions of this fellow, which is really unfortunate. And, you know, of course, two of those technically aren't even a Neurognathus. That's why when I was doing the poll, I put a Neurognathids, you know, as in the, the family of a Neurognathidae. Because, you know... the about 50% of these depictions are not even in Neurognathus. Um, so, yeah, no, just, just be sure to let me know what you guys think of this little fella down in the comments down below. And if you are new to the channel and you like prehistoric-related content, please consider subscribing. I would love to have you on board. We do a lot of really cool videos like this, and, you know, I have a lot of fun with it. It's, a, it's an awesome channel. I like you guys. You guys are awesome. But thank you so much to all my patrons and my channel members. You guys are helping out tremendously. If you want to help support me, the of course, the links for those are down below. You get access to some really awesome perks. And, you know, I'd love to have you on the team as well. But until next time, thank you guys so much for watching and have an awesome day.